Storm time! The city of Townsville! A peaceful place filled with friendly citizens saying hi to each other as they pass on the street. Children playing in the park without a care in the world. And home to everyone's favorite little superheroes, the Powerpuff Girls. Sugar, spice, and everything nice. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girls. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Chemical X! Thus, the Powerpuff Girls were born! Using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup have dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil! Innocent Bubbles, the sweet, cheerful lass with blonde pigtails, was playing with her stuffed animals, lost in her own imaginary world. A teddy bear was currently going to the grocery store to buy honey, but is stopped by a bunny rabbit who claimed to be an old friend. The rough yet loyal Buttercup liked to spend her time hitting and kicking her punching bag, working as hard as she could to improve her strength. She liked power and had lots of it, but it just never seemed to be enough. Despite her tough nature and spicy attitude, she was still just as sweet as the other two. Last, there was Blossom, the leader, sitting on their bed and reading a rather large book on biology. She would study highly advanced subjects, not for school, but for fun, as she enjoyed intellectual stimulation. Blossom was incredibly smart, and was still only in kindergarten. The girls were wrenched out of their own little world by the pause of the hotline, which was wont to mean trouble. Blossom flashed over to it, immediately accompanied by her sisters, and picked up the receiver. Yes, Mayor? She said urgently. Powerpuff Girls! exclaimed the mayor of Townsville on the other end. Mojo Jojo has built a huge missile launcher thing and is pointed straight at the city! He's controlling it from his lair! Oh, please help! We're on it, Mayor! Blossom exclaimed before hanging up the phone. She turned to her sisters. Mojo is at it again, girls! Let's go! Without hesitation, they zoomed out of their bedroom windows and flew toward the volcano, which on top held the lair of Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo was one of the more notorious criminals that wreaked havoc on the city, and often came as a challenge to the girls, for he had the advantage of enhanced brain power and technology on his side. It was pretty impressive seeing as how he was a monkey, but just like the girls, he had been exposed to Chemical X. Not so fast, Mojo Jojo! Blossom cried as the girls crashed through the roof. Mojo was sitting at a control panel for the missile launcher and was about to fire, but the arrival of the girls caught his attention. <laughs> he laughed evilly. You cannot stop me this time, girls! For you see, I am over here, and you are over there! This is a problem for you because the button to launch the missile is over here! But I am the one who has the button, which is over here! And you are still over there! <laughs> Without warning, Buttercup darted toward Mojo and clocked him right in the face! However, before he fell out of his chair, he managed to hit the red button, which said LAUNCH on it. No! Buttercup shouted, but Bubbles was two steps ahead. She shot back outside the lair, and the missile was about to fire, but with a mighty kick, Bubbles spun the launcher up toward the sky instead. Then, with a deafening the giant rocket flew out into space. When Bubbles returned to the fight, she saw that her sisters had it pretty under control. Buttercup socked Mojo in the face a few more times, and then Blossom came around to kick him in the stomach, causing him to fly backward and onto the floor. The helmet on his head was cracked a little bit, so part of his brain was exposed. Well, Mojo, said Buttercup confidently, her hands on her hips as she stared down at the monkey, had enough? To all three of the girls' surprise, Mojo started laughing again. Ha <laughs> ha! Surely you did not think that I didn't think of a backup plan? He cackled. For I knew that you were trying to stop me, so I thought of a clever backup plan to back me up if my first plan failed, which it did! But you did not think I would have thought about such an ingenious plan! Okay, well, what is it? asked Blossom impatiently. Mojo Jojo whipped out a control with a red button on it that said, LAUNCH AGAIN! That's it? Buttercup scoffed. I ain't in the missile at the sky! added Bubbles in her cute little voice. 
Ooh, this is not for that missile launcher! Mojo exclaimed, and he pressed the button, revealing a secondary cannon at the base of the first. With this, I will finally destroy the Powerpuff Girls! That is to say you! You will be the ones who are destroyed, for you are the Powerpuff Girls! Buttercup, destroy the cannon! Blossom shouted quickly. Bubbles, get ready to redirect the missile if it launches! They all split up, Buttercup pounding away at the machine, and Bubbles eyeing the head of the missile carefully, prepared to intercept it. Blossom was fighting Mojo again, for he had yet another backup plan! This time, the red button was on the wall, and it said, LAUNCH ONCE MORE! Mojo was scrabbling to get to this third button, but Blossom had a hold on his cape, tugging him back. There was a huge explosion, and the entire missile launcher crumbled to pieces, the missile itself detonating inside the cannon and worsening the machine's damage. Bubbles and Buttercup turned to watch Blossom, who had lost grip on Mojo's cape. Though his machine was destroyed, he desperately clambered to the button, perhaps to engage a completely separate launcher, but Blossom was determined to stop him. She shot toward him, intending to hit him in the back to throw him to the floor again. There was a soft, squishy thump, and then complete and utter silence. Blossom panted slightly, a little disorientated, but then suddenly noticed something peculiar about her arms. Long, shiny steel blades were protruding out of the skin on her forearms. They were extremely sharp and were currently covered in blood. Shocked, she looked down at herself and saw that her pink dress was now wet and a deep crimson. Bubbles screamed bloody murder and then began to sob hysterically. Buttercup's green eyes were wide as she stared at Mojo Jojo's motionless body. Blossom slowly turned to see what had happened and her heart stopped at the sight. Mojo's eyes, still open, were listless, his mouth slightly agape, and his arms bent at odd angles. The most shocking part, though, was the fact that his lower body seemed to be missing. Mojo had been completely torn in half. Trembling in terror, Blossom's eyes found the lower half laying about a foot away, the intestines spilling out haphazardly. The amount of blood that covered the floor was immense. Blossom stepped forward, her lip trembling and eyes brimming with tears. Mojo? She squeaked. Maybe this was just a cruel joke Mojo was playing on them. There was no way he could be dead. Mojo? Bubbles cried harder, curling up into a little ball on the floor, and Buttercup remained frozen to the spot, unable to tear her gaze away. At last, Blossom came to the full realization of what she had done, and she dropped to her knees, sobbing and staring at the odd blades coming out of her arms. What were they? How did they get there? What did you do? Buttercup finally screamed, tears running down her face as well. It... it was an accident! Blossom shrieked, holding up her arms. I didn't know I could do that! He didn't mean to! What the heck are those? I don't know! With a great amount of concentration, she managed to retract the blades, which looked as though they were much too big to fit inside her arms. When they had been concealed, there was no sign of damage to her skin. Blossom was still crying as she knelt in a large puddle of blood. We have to tell someone! Bubbles squeaked. We have to tell the mayor! No! Blossom shot, and she got back to her feet, staggering from the lightheadedness the terror had given her. We can't tell anyone! We just can't! Blossom, we're supposed to protect people! We're not killers! Buttercup shouted. We've... we've killed monsters! She tried to reason. Mojo was not a monster! Mojo was just as much as a person as we are! This isn't an act of justice! This is a crime! We need to tell the mayor what happened! B but they'll lock us away! If we just explain it was an accident, shut up! Buttercup fell silent, but Bubbles was still wailing. Bubbles, stop crying! Trembling uncontrollably, Bubbles covered her mouth and stared at her blood-drenched sister. Blossom began to pace, her shoes making... Sounds when coming in contact with the wet floor. He... he was a criminal. Maybe no one will notice that he's missing. Blossom, that's not right! Buttercup exclaimed, but Blossom rounded on her again. We are not telling! However, Bubbles shot through the ceiling where they had broken through, and Blossom yelled, Stop her, Buttercup! Though she wanted to disobey, Buttercup went after Bubbles and grabbed her around the waist. Let me go! She shrieked, tears still streaming down her face. Wait! Buttercup hissed. Just, we need to come up with a plan. This calmed Bubbles down a bit, and the two of them flew back down to Mojo's lair. Blossom was staring at the body, horror still playing on her face. 
Then she held up her arms and brought the blades back out, staring at them in confusion. What's happened to me? she muttered. Why do you always get the new powers? Buttercup snapped, but Blossom glared at her. That's not the issue here! The strange weapons retracted once more, and she looked solemnly back into the lifeless face of their foe. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Blossom, said Buttercup gently, we need to tell the mayor. Blossom was quiet for a moment, and then she looked right in the Buttercup's eyes. Grab his lower half, and I'll get the upper part. We're throwing the body into the volcano. What? Bubbles and Buttercup exclaimed in unison. Don't question me! Just do it! Buttercup begrudgingly approached Mojo's legs, trying not to vomit as she saw the innards strewn across the floor. With a light sob, she picked it up, and her and Blossom flew outside to drop the corpse into the lava. Bubbles curled up on the floor again, staring wide-eyed at the still bloody floor. When Blossom and Buttercup returned, they both were silent, Blossom's eyes wide with fear, and Buttercup wiping her tears away, succeeding in staining her face with the blood on her hands. Bubbles looked at them. What are we going to do? She murmured. Just then, Buttercup looked at Blossom and cringed. Blossom saw this and furrowed her brow. What? She asked, and Buttercup shakily pointed to the top of her head. Blossom curiously felt her head and touched something moist and squishy. Grabbing it, she looked at the thing and suddenly shrieked, throwing it to the floor. It was a small chunk of flesh. Blossom covered her face and cried. We should at least tell the professor, Buttercup suggested, once again holding back the urge to throw up. Blossom shook her head. We're not telling anyone. She shot them both a glare. Do you understand? Neither of you are to tell a soul. But, Blossom, argued Bubbles, but Blossom held up her hand to silence her. Okay, well, will you agree to tell the professor about your new ability? Asked Buttercup gingerly. You have to admit... Two giant shards of metal ripping through your skin isn't normal, even for us. Blossom nodded sadly, bowing her head, her messy red hair falling over her face. You both are covered in... <laughs> Bubbles didn't want to say the word, but the other two knew what she meant, and it was true. Since Buttercup had helped dispose of Mojo's body, she had gotten blood all over herself, too. We can't go home looking like this said Blossom, gripping a chunk of her hair and examining it, for it too had traces of the undesired substance. Well, this is Mojo's home, said Buttercup. He has a bath and a washing machine. We'll just clean up here. Seems kind of tactless, Blossom muttered. We don't have a choice. They both nodded, and then Blossom approached Bubbles, holding out her hand to help her up. Bubbles whimpered at the blood on her skin, but allowed her to assist her anyway. While Blossom and Buttercup began cleaning up the gore still left in the middle of the room, Bubbles found the bathroom and started the bath. She saw a yellow rubber ducky sitting next to the soap, and her lip trembled again. She covered her eyes as she waited for the bath to fill. In a short time, the other two had thrown their dresses, stockings, undergarments, and Blossom's bow into the washing machine, and then joined Bubbles. All three of them dismally sat in the warm water, Bubbles holding the duck to her chest as if it was the last thing left in the world. Blossom was silently crying, trying not to pay attention to the bath water turning a dull maroon color. Buttercup herself actually kept her eyes closed. You guys know I didn't mean it, right? Blossom asked quickly, turning to her sisters, who nodded. Of course, said Bubbles softly. But that's why we need to turn ourselves in. No bubbles, Blossom insisted, though her voice wavered. Let's just wait until the professor can get rid of these things. She looked to her arms where the blades would come out, which she now could control. She was thankful for this. Hopefully there would be no more accidents. Once they were clean, Buttercup retrieved their clothes, but the stains hadn't come all the way out. In fact, their stockings had entirely turned a light brown. Oh no, she said, showing Blossom the dresses. Luckily, Bubbles hadn't needed to wash her dress or stockings, or they would have gotten tainted as well. The green and pink dresses now had brownish spots, though they looked more like mud. We'll just say we got dirty, suggested Blossom, and then she inspected her stockings. These are ruined, though. We'll just change when we get home, said Buttercup, pulling on her clothes, but ignoring her own stockings. The other two got dressed as well, and then slowly floated into their room with a destroyed machine. It alone was a painful sight. After tying her bow back into her hair, Blossom gestured for her sisters to follow her, and they flew back home. 
Hi, girls, said Professor Utonium jovially, as the girls floated through the door. All three of them tried not to look guilty, Bubbles struggling with the urge to start crying again. Oh my, you got your clothes all dirty. Rough fight, Blossom choked out. Well, how about you three go change, and I'll get those stains out for you, he suggested. Blossom and Buttercup exchanged looks, and then the three of them flew to their room. He won't realize what the stains are, right? asked Blossom softly, as she pulled on a clean dress and stockings. I don't know, Buttercup replied. Bubbles watched them, holding her stuffed animal octopus as tightly as she had held Mojo Jojo's rubber ducky. They went back downstairs to give the professor their laundry, and then sat on the couch to watch cartoons, Bubbles still clinging to Octi. They hoped that maybe television would help keep their minds off of the tragedy. Professor Utonium was about to throw the dresses into the washing machine with some stain remover, but something about the stains caught his eye. He rubbed at one on Blossom's dress, but only felt fabric. It was not dirt. In fact, it looked like... Curious, the professor took the dress down to his lab and thoroughly inspected the stain. To his surprise and mild horror, he found his suspicion was confirmed. He knew that the girls' fights would get quite intense sometimes, but they've never come home covered in blood before. If anything, it was usually some kind of slime or mucus. Hey, girls? He said when he came back up from his lab. Who did you fight today? Mojo Jojo, said Buttercup, and when they turned to look at him, they were horrified to see him holding up the pink dress. What on earth happened to cause this? He asked, pointing to the brown stains. Uh, well, you know, he's violent, Blossom said in a squeak. But this is a lot of blood, said the professor. Are you three all right? Are you hurt? We're fine, Blossom and Buttercup choked, but Bubbles' lip was trembling, and the professor noticed this. Bubbles, what happened? Before the other two could stop her, she started sobbing again. Blossom killed Mojo! She wailed. Bubbles! Blossom gasped, but when she noticed the professor's expression, she began to panic. He was pale, staring at Blossom with confused terror, unsure of what to say or do. Her desperation and fear overcame rationality, and in less than a second, she had shot at the professor and shoved him to the floor. What are you doing? Buttercup shouted, and she attempted to apprehend Blossom, who was crying now. No one can know! She sobbed, struggling against Buttercup's hold. Professor Utonium never took his eyes off of the two of them, specifically Blossom. He couldn't believe that his sweet little girl could have taken a life, even that of a criminal. Bubbles stayed on the couch, watching the scene and continuing to sob. He can help us! Buttercup pleaded with Blossom. He can fix you! If we don't get help, we'll make things worse! Blossom noticed the professor start to get up, intending to run and call for help, and she once again acted without thinking. Pushing past Buttercup, Blossom slashed the professor's leg with one of her blades. He yelled in agony as his leg was actually severed below the knee. Professor! Bubbles and Buttercup shouted. Buttercup bellowed at her sister, who still cried as she watched the man bleeding on the floor. He's going to tell! We have to keep him here! She replied hysterically. So you chop off his leg? Buttercup smacked Blossom across the face. He is our father! He can help! Why would you do that? I... I panicked! Buttercup! The professor suddenly gasped, tears running down his own face. Buttercup gave Blossom a violently hostile look and then descended to the floor to help him. It's okay, she said, but was mostly trying to convince herself. It'll be okay. We'll be okay. Buttercup had gone to hug him, but just as her arms wrapped over his shoulders, there was a horrific squelch, and blood splashed on her face. Eyes wide, Buttercup froze, and there was a long silence before Bubble shrieked again. Professor, no! Afraid of what she was about to see, Buttercup lifted her head. The professor had been decapitated. Uh, what? She stammered, backing away from the body, but suddenly noticed what had caused the death of her father figure. On both the front and underside of her forearms, a large rounded blade had emerged, making both arms look like double-sided axes. Blossom had her mouth covered, looking between the headless man and her sister, vision blurred from tears. What's happening? I'm next! Bubbles screamed. Buttercup shot into the air, glaring daggers at Blossom. This is your fault! She shrieked. My fault! Blossom yelled back. How is this my fault? I didn't cut off his head! You cut off his leg! 
If you had just kept calm, he wouldn't have been hurt in the first place! He was asking too many questions! So what? You're going to attack anyone who asks a question? We're not criminals, Blossom! Buttercup held out her arms to show her new weapon. He could have prevented this! He could have fixed you! If you'd have just agreed to tell someone about Mojo, the professor wouldn't be dead! Bubbles continued to wail, covering her face with Octi. Bubbles, stop crying! Blossom bellowed, and Bubbles stifled her sobs. Blossom looked to the professor's body, and she herself had to keep from screaming in despair. Blossom, we have to tell, said Buttercup firmly. Bubbles is right. This has happened to both of us now, so it's probably going to happen to her too. At this point, I don't care if we go to prison for the rest of our lives. I can't live with the guilt. In one day, two people have been killed, and both of them were responsible for our birth. Don't you remember the story about Mojo Jojo pushing the professor while he worked? And it gave Mojo his increased brain power too. Yeah, well, if it wasn't for Mojo Jojo, we wouldn't have blades sticking out of our arms because we wouldn't have powers in the first place, said Blossom. That's not the point! Buttercup was trying her best not to look at the professor's body. She sighed, managing to retract her blades. I don't care what you say. Bubbles and I are going to tell the mayor what has happened today. Do you love me? asked Blossom softly, and Buttercup met her pink eyes. Of course I do. I love you and Bubbles. Then... Please do as I say. The room went silent, save for Bubbles sniffling. Blossom, Buttercup pleaded after a moment. We need to clean this up, Blossom said firmly, trying to keep calm. Girls, help me take the professor down to the lab. We need to destroy the body. We can use our heat vision. No! Bubbles cried angrily, wiping her tears. We need to bury him! It'd be wrong not to give him a proper burial! If we bury him, his body could be found, Blossom argued. We need to get rid of the evidence. I'm not going to help you do that! Fine! Buttercup, you help me! Bubbles, clean the mess up here! Buttercup hesitated, her lip trembling. Buttercup, help me! Feeling more miserable than she had in her entire life, Buttercup assisted Blossom by carrying the professor's head. She tried her best to tell herself it was nothing but a simple, wet basketball. Bubbles watched them go, and then sadly went to the kitchen, not even bothering to fly. She returned to the crime scene with many different cleaning supplies, staring at the huge amount of blood on the carpet. There was no way she'd be able to clean it up. She didn't even want to. As she bent down to wipe the area with a towel, her hands shook and her vision became blurry with more tears. She couldn't do it. Bubbles collapsed into the crimson puddle and sobbed, curled up in a ball on her side. She didn't care that she was now bloody as well. She just wanted the nightmare to end. When her sisters came back up, both looking extremely solemn, they noticed Bubbles laying on the floor. What are you doing? Blossom spat. Why is this not cleaned up yet? I can't! Bubbles squeaked, shaking as if she was freezing cold. Then just go up to the room and we'll take care of it. Bubbles did what she was told without arguing, entering their colorful and happy-looking bedroom. She realized she hadn't smiled since before they left to stop Mojo Jojo. And even as she hugged another one of her stuffed animals, she continued to frown. She sat on the end of the bed, blood on her dress staining the blanket, and stared at the hotline. Bubbles contemplated calling the mare, but she was afraid that Blossom would get mad. Why was this happening to them? When was she going to accidentally take someone's life with the arrival of their new ability? I don't want to be a killer, she told the dolphin she was holding, her eyes stinging from the amount of crying she's done for the past few hours. I'd rather be in jail than hurt anyone. By the time Blossom and Buttercup managed to get a majority of the blood cleaned up, it had gotten dark. The girls entered the room to see Bubbles beneath the blanket, fast asleep. They were exhausted too, so they got into bed as well. Maybe we'll wake up, and this will all have been a nightmare, Blossom whispered, and Buttercup sniffled, laying down without a retort. Still trying not to break out into more tears, Blossom lay her head on her pillow, closing her eyes and falling asleep. Call the soft voice. Blossom's eyes opened slowly, looking around for whoever was calling her name. She gasped as she saw a swirling red portal on the opposite wall. 
Though she was frightened, Blossom carefully rose into the air, floating over to the vortex. Who's there? she whispered. Blossom, come here, the voice repeated. She hesitated, but then entered the portal. She found herself standing on a cliff, and surrounding her was boiling lava and flickering flames, which reached into pitch-black nothingness that should have been the sky. Blossom was frightened, holding herself for comfort. Hello? she called, but recoiled as a burst of flame shot up right in front of her, revealing a tall, thin figure with red skin. The androgynous man grinned down at Blossom, a smile all too familiar to her. Him? Hello there, little Blossom, said him in his eerie, high-pitched voice. You sure have been having some fun lately, haven't you? Blossom's expression became angry, and she whipped out her blades, holding them up for him to see. Did you do this to me? She screamed, tears running down her cheeks. Him laughed, and a comfy armchair appeared out of thin air behind him. He sat down and crossed his legs in a feminine way, eyeing the Powerpuff Girl curiously. Why, no, I did not, he replied. Though I'd love to shake the hand of whoever did do it. Rather clever, don't you think? No! Blossom yelled. I killed Mojo Jojo, and Buttercup killed the Professor. We think Bubbles is next to get this power. Most likely, said him apathetically. But who knows, maybe hers will be slow and harmless just like she is. If you're not doing this, then why am I here? Blossom demanded. I just wanted to see how you were holding up, that's all. Your first time is always the most vivid. She dropped to her knees and sobbed gently, retracting the steel blade so that she could cover her face. I don't want to hurt anyone. I didn't mean to. I didn't want this. Aw, don't be sad. Him cooed, standing and kneeling in front of Blossom, touching her chin to make her look up at him. Everyone has to grow up eventually, even sweet little girls like you. It's a shame, I know. But we have to accept the changes that come with getting older. Do you really think this has something to do with aging? Blossom spat, smacking his claw away. It's possible. Of course, I wouldn't know for sure. The professor probably would have. Him cackled. Such a shame that he's dead. Stop patronizing me! Blossom shouted. You misunderstand me. I'm on your side. But your sisters aren't. Him suddenly teleported behind Blossom, and she whipped around to face him, terrified. Bubbles and Buttercup, bless their hearts, want to turn you in. They don't care about your feelings at all. That's... that's not true! Blossom cried desperately. Then why don't they do what you say? Aren't you the leader? She was silent for a moment, lost in thought. Just like you said to Buttercup, if they loved you, they'd obey you. It's your job to keep them in line. His last four words were spoken in a low and harsh tone, making Blossom flinch. That wouldn't be fair, she mumbled. Fine, don't take my advice, said him sweetly. But be prepared to join me in hell. Blossom screamed as she was engulfed in flames, but a second later, she found herself on her bedroom floor, panting and covered in sweat. After a moment of sitting there regaining her composure, she decided that she wouldn't be able to get back to sleep, so she went back downstairs. When Bubbles and Buttercup woke early the next morning, they were worried to see Blossom missing. They flew downstairs to look for her, trying to ignore the light brown stain on the living room carpet, and found her in the kitchen. She was sitting at the table with a mug in front of her, and her eyes were wide as she stared off into space. Uh, Blossom? Buttercup said tentatively. Blossom's eyes snapped onto her sister's, and she smiled, which unnerved them a bit. Good morning! She said, her voice a higher pitch than usual. It's a wonderful morning! I'm looking forward to seeing all of our friends at school today! Blossom, is that coffee? Asked Bubbles, hovering over to look inside the mug. Yeah! She exclaimed, her eye twitching. Great stuff! I'm ready for the day! Yep, yep! Nothing will go wrong today! Didn't you sleep last night? 
said Buttercup, alarmed at her manic behavior. Nope, I couldn't sleep, so I came down to watch TV, and then I was like, Hey, I'm hungry, and then I saw the coffee, and I figured that I'd be too sleepy for school, so I made the coffee. How many cups have you had? asked Bubbles slowly. I don't know, I lost count. Her sisters exchanged furtive looks, their concern escalating. Maybe you should stay home today, Bubbles suggested. Oh no, I couldn't do that. I haven't missed a day this semester. Miss Keen would be so disappointed in me, replied Blossom, still smiling that strange smile. But Blossom, said Buttercup, but Blossom interrupted. I'm going to school, she shouted, and the other two flinched. I'm going to school, and I will have a good day. Don't argue with me. Though afraid of how Blossom was acting, Bubbles and Buttercup started to get ready for school, not feeling hungry enough to eat breakfast. It wasn't long before Blossom joined them, now completely silent and no longer smiling. Once dressed, the girls slung their backpacks over their shoulders and left the house. It felt weird to just go to school and act as if nothing had happened the previous day. In fact, if it weren't for the stain on the carpet and absence of the professor, the girls would have genuinely felt like it had been a bad dream. Now the world seemed empty and unrealistic, the tragedy leaving a gaping hole in their hearts. Miss Keene was giving a lecture on subtraction, but none of the girls were listening very hard. Bubbles' lip was trembling, feeling as if there were a golf ball in her throat, trying not to cry. Buttercup slouched in her chair, plagued by a painful headache as she was overcome with depression. Blossom gripped her dress firmly, trembling slightly, giving a tiny twitch every few minutes. The images of Mojo Jojo and the professor's bodies wouldn't leave her mind, carrying them, destroying them cleaning up the blood. It was traumatizing, and no little girl as young as her deserved to witness, let alone experience, such horrid events. Nevertheless, her stomach churned in anticipation, as though she was waiting for something exciting to happen. There was so much blood. So much blood. Miss Kane! Blossom suddenly squeaked, thrusting her right arm into the air. The teacher turned her attention to Blossom, and was shocked to see how pale and sickly she looked. Yes, Blossom? I d don't feel well. Can I go home? Bubbles and Buttercup stared at her, but were relieved that she was finally taking their advice. Yes, you may, Miss Keen replied. I hope you'll feel better. Without so much as a goodbye, Blossom was gone in less than a second. Flying far away from Townsville, her eyes fell upon the vast woods and dove down toward the trees. There, she simply sat against a trunk and buried her face in her arms, pulling her knees to her chest and crying. Why is this happening? She whimpered to herself. I'm a good person. I help people. Blossom thought about the professor and felt even more remorse. I can't believe he's gone. This is all my fault. A bird squawked as it took flight from a tree branch, and she lifted her head to watch it, her eyes listless. Then she twitched. Slowly getting to her feet, she didn't even bother wiping the dirt off of the back of her dress, and she started, not flying, but walking deeper into the woods. Fuzzy Lumpkins was inside his shabby cabin, sitting on a bale of hay and tuning his banjo. He liked to keep to himself, preferring the comfort of the woods over the hustle and bustle of the city. He hated people, and he got angry whenever someone trespassed on his property. All of a sudden, the wooden front door began to creak open, and his attention was torn away from his instrument. Furrowing his brow, Fuzzy stood up, wondering if the wind had pushed it. However, when it fully opened, he saw a tiny figure standing behind the frame. Blossom? Fuzzy growled angrily, huffing and getting ready to hit the Powerpuff Girl. Her blank pink eyes simply stared up at him, and Fuzzy grabbed his gun. Y'all best get on your way, or I'll blast your pretty little head right off! She didn't move. You got till a count of three! One! Blossom stepped into the cabin. Two! She closed the door. Three! Fuzzy froze as two extremely sharp blades shot out of the little girl's arms. His eyes widened, staring at her as if she were a ghost. Blossom's eyes began to fill with tears. I'm sorry, she mumbled, continuing to approach the fluffy pink creature. Blossom! Buttercup called as her and Bubbles flew into the house. School had let out, and the two of them were anxious to see how their sister was doing. Blossom, you home? Blossom? Bubbles tried, checking the kitchen. Maybe she's in our room. 
I hope she's sleeping. She looked exhausted," said Buttercup. They flew into the room, but stopped when they saw a figure curled up in a corner, facing away from them. "Blossom," said Buttercup softly, and her and Bubbles slowly floated over to her, landing on the floor behind her. "Are you okay?" asked Bubbles. "You should be sleeping." Bubbles paused, suddenly noticing patches of blood on her arms and in her hair. Blossom, he never comes to Townsville," said Blossom in an emotionless, almost inaudible tone. "He never goes anywhere. No one will know he's gone." She lifted her hand without facing them, and clutched in it was an antenna that was topped with a gray ball of fuzz. Then she carelessly dropped it on the floor. Buttercup quickly covered Bubbles' mouth as she was about to start sobbing again, for she was afraid that any sudden actions would cause Blossom to flip out. Keeping Bubbles in her arms, she silently rose into the air and backed out of the room, closing the door as quietly as she could. Bubbles was squeaking and whimpering desperately, trying to express her distraught. But Buttercup gestured for her to calm down, even though she was having difficulty staying calm herself. Without making any sounds, they flew out of the house. Buttercup holding Bubbles' hand as she kept her lips shut tight, holding back the urge to cry. At last, the woods came into view, and they descended straight toward Fuzzy Lumpkin's cabin, landing on the porch. They stared at the door fearfully, and Buttercup met Bubbles' eyes. Bubbles quickly shook her head, and Buttercup exhaled, pushing the door open. Bubbles finally started screaming and crying at the sight. What was once a pink bear-like monster was now nothing but chunks of blood-soaked fur, torn flesh, and stray organs. Unlike the previous day, Buttercup couldn't keep herself from throwing up. She retched, coughing up nothing but bile since she hadn't eaten all day. Why? Bubbles shrieked, unable to tear her eyes away from the bloody scene. She set it up in an accident yesterday. She didn't mean to do it. Why is she doing this? I don't think she really meant to do this, Bubbles. Said Buttercup, her tone calm, even though her entire being was overcome with horror. She slowly pointed to the far wall, and there was a single word written in bloody slashes carved into the wood. Sorry. I'm scared. Bubbles whimpered, and Buttercup hugged her tightly, finally starting to cry as well. Me too, Bubbles. Me too. After a few minutes of attempted comfort, the girls exited the cabin, closing the door and sitting on the edge of the porch. They didn't speak to each other, even as Buttercup brought out her axe-like blades to examine them. Finally, she retracted them again and turned to her sister. I don't care what Blossom said, she said firmly. We're going to tell the mayor. This has gone way too far. Killing the professor was going way too far. But you didn't mean it either, said Bubbles with a sniffle. Yeah, but do you think I haven't stopped feeling guilty about it? It was still me who did it, and if things hadn't happened the way it did, it probably could have been someone else. We need to stop this before anyone else gets hurt, and before this happens to you. Let's go now," said Bubbles quickly, rising into the air. "Hurry before Blossom has a chance to realize we're gone." Buttercup nodded, and they flew as fast as they could to the mayor's office.